is up YouTube? Today's video, we're gonna go over this one profile that I saw that someone linked in my Discord. So if you ever have any profiles that you want me to look at, just show it up in my Discord and you, maybe I'll review it. So this person posted it and I was like, wow, someone actually beat the 1 billion DPS cleave guy. And this is a build I don't really know that much about. I never really played miners before. I do know that Eye of Winter Mines was one of the hottest bosslers at League Start. But I never really tried it out. And mainly because the mapping playstyle for mines is really, really bad. However, Ice Spear Mines does have a very high cap of damage. And this character was pretty much an Eye of Winter Miner that got converted over to Ice Spear. Now, the reason you want to convert it over to Ice Spear is pretty much because Ice Spear gets counted for shotgunning on poe ninja but i i have winner does not so that's pretty much something that has to do with the config so right here we have ice spear miner and this is a dead eye and he says it's around 200 million dps so we can see what it looks like but overall the playstyle should be relatively the same now the reason you want to be an inquisitor is because you do have a lot of penetration but this person was playing eye of winner and i think he just swapped over to build just to put ice spear instead and you can see here they're kind of putting the mines a little bit further away so that ice spear can travel further and then ice spear has two different stages the first stage and then the second stage the second stage does a lot more damage and it also has increased projectile speed increased crit chance and increased multi now poe ninja counts as every single projectile as hitting the boss so right here you can see it's all shotgunning into the boss and it does seem like this is probably around like a 200 million dps build if he pre-stacks it all now the nice part about mines is you can see that you can put down a bunch of mines before the fight and you can pretty much pre-stack all of the damage so your damage is might even be higher on the burst phase than what it may seem like on poe ninja or whatever it might show now this is a very very squishy build and it's pretty much meant for only bossing I think he only has 1380 HP. So we're going to see about this profile. You can see here, he was originally playing Eye of Winter, and it was at 60 mil DPS. Now this character was, he is Eye of Winter Enjoyer. And you can see here, he doesn't have all unique flasks. So that's what the character looked like before he turned it into a POE Ninja Warrior. Now you can see here, he has five unique flasks. So we're going to go over... What exactly is Ice Spear and why exactly this build does so much damage and what you can learn from this build and scale your own damage in the future. Now, as I said, Ice Spear has two forms. You can see here, launches shards of ice in rapid succession. After traveling a short distance, they change to a second form, which moves much faster and pierces through enemies. So the base damage of the skill is like, okay. It has 130% effectiveness, not exactly the highest. So second form has 600% increased crit chance. And also 49% multi and 300% more projectile speed. And this is a build that can shotgun. So you can see here, projectile count 10. So if you look on POE Ninja, where you import the profile over, you can see there's all projectiles and one projectile. So one projectile does this amount of damage. And 10 projectiles, or all projectiles, is multiplied by 10. So it's around 2 billion DPS. So this is why Awakened GMP and Dying Sun is a huge deal. So if you look at Dying Sun... When you put the enkindling orb on it with 70% increased effect, you can get like three projectiles. So that's why this flash is actually a 42.9% DPS increase, which is actually just crazy. So overall, the build does rely on Inquisitor for penetration. This is an Eye of Winter Miner build that the guy slightly adjusted the template for. So you have Annihilating Light, which grants you triple damage. And then you have Heat Shiver. Now, this helm is pretty good if the enemy is considered frozen. And we'll see later on that it's not really considered frozen in this case. And it has plus one max power charge on the helm. And he still has the Eye of Winter enchant. So he didn't even go out of his way to fully tooltip warrior it and get an Ice Spear additional projectile enchant. So Lionized Vision is a chest that's pretty much unbeatable in terms of damage. It's easy to double corrupt. You can get plus four gems relatively easily. And it also has level 15 pierce, which is a 10% more damage multiplier. So this chest is pretty much bis in terms of damage. Now next up, we have Doedri's Tenure. And this is an easily double corrupt gloves because I think it's really, really cheap. And since we're playing a minor build, we don't need to care about cast speed. So even though we have reduced cast speed, that doesn't really matter. What does matter is you get 100% increase to spell damage, which helps a lot for your increased multiplier. And then you have some more multiplier with maximum frenzy charges. 
Dark Ray Vectors, well, we'll see later that this is probably a completely troll pair of boots that's pretty much being used in order to get plus one frenzy charges and plus two auras, which if we see in his boots, as what is in his boots? So the boots has zealotry, so that actually helps out the zealotry a little bit. And then he has two circle of fear rings, and these are Herald of Ice rings. So he has Herald of Ice reservation efficiency and then plus one max cold res and then he has cold damage with herald of ice but the main part about these rings is that they're both plus one power charge so he has plus two power charges over here and next up his belt now i didn't really notice or that much about mining builds in the past or trap builds is that trap and mine throw speed actually greatly increases your damage on path of path of building so what happens is that this counts as how many traps you can actually throw out in a second or mines and in this case you can throw out nine mines per second so having this mod on your belt is actually an incredible damage increase and overall he also has flash supply to have 13 percent increased effect and 30 percent 33 percent reduced flash charges gain now in terms of his flash these are pretty much all meme flasks in terms of what they do in kindling orb this is pretty much used for culling this thing gives you in enemies ignited by you during flash effect take 10% increased damage so it's like a 10% damage multiplier and this thing over here gives him the projectiles this thing has a 10% damage multiplier for consecrated ground roughly and then Aziri's promise is just gain 8% of elemental damage as extra chaos damage which does help out a lot now in terms of what the tree actually does it's a pretty much a standard tree that goes to the two large cluster slots he does take Prismatic Heart and Cold to the Core. And Cold to the Core is pretty good in terms of the amount of cold damage you get. So you can see here it's 150, 150, 415. So he gets around probably like 22% cold damage from this. And then the main point of this build is that he has a bunch of eye to eye and repeater clusters. And these things give an incredible amount of projectile damage. So this one gets 30%. And then this one gets 25% and 35% for nearby enemies. So that actually helps a lot. So these jewels are incredible in bumping up the increased percent damage. Because if you can see here, his increased percent damage is at 887%. Now overall for the tree, you will notice he has a militant faith right here. Militant faith converts inner conviction to grant power charges instead of frenzy charges. Now there is a bit of cheating in this profile and it's actually pretty big. When you import over the profile, you will see that he has power and frenzy charges even though inner conviction makes it you can't gain frenzy charges so you can only gain power charges so that is actually kind of unfortunate because if you take off the frenzy charges his damage goes all the way down to 1.2 billion and that's a pretty big cheating thing now overall this tree literally focuses on crit multi auras and then some trap nodes right here or mine nodes and then you have some more mine crit multi nodes and then some more crit multi nodes over here and this is um um he has some uh, increased damage from heralds and then this node right here actually is a lot of damage he has a lot of power charges so it actually gives him 72 percent increased damage from disciple with the forbidden and he does have nine power charges with the setup so overall it's your standard tree and he does have this medium cluster over here gorilla tactics and arcane pyrotechnics and arcane pyrotechnics is pretty much used so that you can get arcane surge whenever your mine is detonated targeting an enemy so he does get a lot of more multipliers from this uh, tree setup but you can see here the reason why he gets frenzy charges on the build for poe ninja is because charged mines actually grant you frenzy charges so this kind of overrides it so you see here he has charged mines and charged mines says 30 percent chance to gain a frenzy charge when a mine for supported skills is detonated targeting an enemy and this is pretty much just a loophole that he's exploiting that he gets frenzy charges even though he has inner conviction now next up you might be wondering how does he have so much damage and it all comes down to how much more multipliers you can scale and this is an incredible amount of more multipliers you have 14 percent for pierce 50 percent more damage from trap and mine damage and then you have 28 percent more damage from the seven frenzy charges he has 30 percent more damage for pain attunement 27 percent for the nine power charges and inner conviction he has 13 percent more damage from berserk now berserk actually gives more spell damage when you have the alternate quality divergent berserk and he links this to an awakened enhance now next up you will see he has righteous fire which is 45 percent more damage 10 percent more for skitterbots 
Zealotry is 32%, and then Arcane Surge, which he gets from the medium cluster, is 20% more damage. And this is pretty much as much more multiplier you'll ever see in a build. And it really goes to show you what happens when you stack all of that more damage. Now, in terms of increased damage, you will see most of his increased damage comes from the gloves and all these eye to eye repeater clusters. So he has eye to eye right here, it's 35 plus 25 percent, which is insane. So he has a bunch of these and a repeater is at 30 percent. So the bulk majority of the 887 percent increased damage is all from the gloves and the three eye to eye repeater clusters, and then 72 percent from Disciple of the Forbidden. Now for crit multi, he has a nice source of crit multi from pretty much a lot of different sources. He has it from the tree. He also has it, does he actually even use crit damage gem? I don't think so. So he also has some crit damage for the ice spear skill inherently on the second form. And let's see what else. He has a bunch on the jewels. So all of these jewels, oh, these jewels are even three modded. He should probably exalt these jewels, right? So even though this person is kind of cheating, he could probably cheat a lot harder. Now, in terms of his Watcher's Eye, he has a triple Watcher's Eye. So, cold damage, increased cold damage, and then crit multi. So, he, I'm pretty sure he's running precision. Yeah, he's running precision over here in order to take advantage of the crit multi. So, 713% crit multi is pretty high, but he could definitely get higher if he got better jewels. Ice Spear is a cold tag skill, so you can get crit multi of elemental. You can get crit multi of cold, and you can also get crit multi with spells and generic crit multi. Now, overall, he is having 10 projectiles total. So you can see here, 10 projectile shotgunning, 5 from Awakened GMP, 1 plus from the base. He has 1 plus from the base of the skill, and then he has plus 3 from Dying Sun. If he wanted to cheat harder, he could also get a Heat Shiver with plus 1 Ice, uh, ice Spear projectiles, which should bring him up to 11. And in terms of throwing speed, so this is pretty much the attack speed equivalent for mines. He has 9.03 mines thrown per second. And he does have a lot of sources of mind throw speed. You can get mind throw speed on jewels. You can get it on the belt craft. So where is it? Oh, it's under right here. So you can see he has 70% for charged mines, high impact mine. His amulet has some mind throwing speed. His belt and his jewels has a bunch of it. And gorilla tactics also gives 10%. So overall, bunch of mind throwing speed to make up for the fact that you can't really stack cast speed and attack speed on this build. So overall, you add all of this up, and then that's how you get a build with 2 billion damage. Now, in terms of how much cheating, there is a lot of cheating going on in this build. However, there's also some things that aren't accounted for. Since he's using the Heat Shiver thing, he does gain 100% of cold damage as extra fire damage against frozen enemies. I think the damage threshold is high enough. So if you actually look at here, you actually check, is the enemy frozen? You will see that the damage goes all the way up to 3.8 billion. However, you uncheck the Frenzy charges and you'll see it goes back down to 2.2. And then he's also using two auras linked to Divine Blessing. And I'm pretty sure you could only have one at a time, right? You only have one aura, so he actually has Hatred and Zealotry linked to it. So I think you probably have to disable one of these auras. Not really sure which one you want to disable. But you can see if you disable one of them, it goes down a lot more. Now, Inner Conviction, and I think this is a big one, it makes it so you can't get even Frenzy Charges. So this config that has Frenzy Charges initially is probably not real. And it's kind of unfortunate. Now, he does have five unique flasks with Enkindling Orb for ultimate padding. And this one gives him Culling. So if you take off this one, it's all the way down to 1.1. Cinder Swallow, and then a Dying Sun. So go, without the flash up, he has 585 million, and this is with the enemy considered frozen. If you turn that off, it goes down to 320 million, which is still an incredibly high number. Uh, but he could also pad it up a little bit more in the sense that his jewels aren't quad multi or triple multi, so he can definitely get more there to like eight to nine hundred percent multi. He could get another projectile on the heat shiver. So in the end, the frenzy charge is a huge deal. So I guess in the future, if you want to tooltip warrior it put a frenzy gem in if you put a frenzy gem in you can actually get frenzy charges right here and you can also benefit from inner conviction while also having frenzy charges now overall mine builds are absolutely amazing at bossing as you can pre-stack the boss it's actually a decent play style however it really sucks for mapping but i do think one of the cheapest uber bosses you can do is probably a miner so as you can see here, this is Path of Mass video that you can check out. He goes over how you can one-shot Ubers on a budget. With this, pretty much the exact same build. 
And this build is incredibly cost efficient for what it actually does. If you went with cheaper gear, you can definitely probably get a couple hundred million DPS on a budget, as he says. And I think he says it was like 167 million DPS and it was a pretty budget setup. And part of the reason why this occurs is because the mine and trap supports are actually just crazy. So this one here has increased mine throw speed, support skills at per frenzy charge. Wait, do you actually get frenzy charges on this build? I'm actually not really sure. Someone let me know down in the comments below if you can actually get frenzy charges of inner conviction because I'm actually not positive about that anymore. Considering I see that this gem link is has 10% increased mind throwing speed per frenzy charge. So you wouldn't actually have the mind throwing speed without the frenzy charges. I'm not too sure. How do you actually gain frenzy charges for this? Maybe it's possible that what's it called? That you get frenzy charges when a mine from support skills detonated because it doesn't count as yourself. I guess someone just has to tell me. I'm pretty sure someone has played this build before, but this item is insane. Heat Shiver, you gain 100% of cold damage, extra fire damage against frozen enemies. Now, the important distinction about this is that the bosses can be counted as frozen, but bosses, you can't reduce their action piece speed past a certain amount, so the boss will still be able to cast and do its ability. Now, in the end, why does this profile do so much damage? You stack more multipliers, you have a high projectile count for shotgunning, you have a lot of crit multi, and you have a lot of mind throw speed, and you get a build with infinite damage. But thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you find more mirrors, exalted orbs, and divines than me. And see you next time. Bye. Stay